Hey everyone, welcome back to Heart Talks and this is the Q&A show, so let's get started. So I've got all your questions written down in my little black book. Um, I have to wear my glasses because I'm going half blind um, and now I look like a newsreader. So let's get started. So first of all, Carolyn from Glasgow asked, where do you prefer, London or Glasgow? Right, um, this is difficult, Carolyn, because I grew up in Glasgow and as you know, it's a great place to grow up. And um, the Glasgow people are amazing. They are forthright, they're funny, they're out there. They're just like, they're really in your face kind of people, but at the same time, they're very, very kind. They would give the shirt off their back to you if you needed it. So it was a great place, despite my crazy upbringing, to actually grow up. Um, so I love it for that, and I love it because it will always be home to me. Um, but it has rotten weather, cold, snow, and lots of rain. So London, which isn't a lot better, you know, in the weather stakes, um, is was very good for me work-wise, you know, professionally, London, you know, I got opportunities that I wouldn't have got in Glasgow 15 years ago. So, I'm kind of torn. Um, I, As I say, I will always love Glasgow, um, but I suppose now here I am, and um, that's where I, here is where I am for the time being. Next question is, what is my favourite music? Well, I have to hold my hands up and say I am a complete and utter musical theatre geek. I love musical theatre soundtracks, movie soundtracks. I've got them on in the flat, in the car, wherever I am, there's one on. And um, a lot of my friends think, what the heck is that? And I'm like, that's the new musical from, you know. Um, so I love them, but I also love me some diva. Give me some Diva and I am happy. Give me some Whitney, some Mary J, some Celine, some Patti LaBelle, some Phyllis Hyman, some Barbara Streisand, some Adele, some J-Lo, some Jennifer Hudson. All of those, they're just unbelievable women who just tear your heart out, stamp all over it, and then give it you back with a kiss. They're just amazing. So yeah, that's my music tastes. Number three is, have I ever been in love? Oh, why don't we just get straight to it, eh? So, yes, I have. And then the next question is, how many times and where in the world were you? So, I have been in love twice. The first time I lived in Glasgow and um, I fell for a guy who was younger than me, who I didn't think a relationship would work with and um, was glad to be proven wrong. Um, he was a great guy and we had a couple of great years together. And then I moved to London and um, fell in love again. And um, a lot of you know that story from Shadow Dreamer. So they're the two great loves of my life and I'm very, very happy that they happened. When will Shadow Dreamer the book be coming out? And Stephen from Glasgow asks that. Stephen, the book is has nearly happened. Obviously, Andrea and myself did start to write the book, but the thing about writing a book is you need to you need to commit one hundred percent to it. You need to be able to give your time, your energy, your money, all resources need to go into writing a book. Um, and although Andrea and I were very willing to do that. Um, she still had her agency at the time. I was still pursuing acting full time at that time as well. And um, it was just, it was a lot. We knew it was going to be a lot of work. We always knew it was. Um, and also for me, emotionally, it was, um, it was hard because, you know, you have to go back and visit places, you know, go back to to places where the story began and you know all these kind of thing and just just thinking about it now it feels emotional you know of how tough that was you know so it's it, it I would like to do it again one day I would like to, to continue it one day um, but you need a team you need to have the support you know um, because it's a big project so watch that space 
highest and lowest points of sharing my story in New York? Well, the highest points definitely, you know, um, closing my show off Broadway was just unbelievable. You know, having that show running there was just like, what? Unbelievable. Um, but also the realization of what a story can do. You know, I had no idea of what my story would do. And I had no idea of what other people's stories, because they, people started to write to me and tell me their stories. And they were just mind blowing, and I mean mind blowing, and they were just so powerful. Um, the low point, I think, really was just missing my friends. I just missed my friends from the UK. And um, I had a couple of great friends in New York, you know, um, they would take me for beer and pizza, you know, and they were the best, you know. Um, but I just missed, I missed sharing what I was doing in New York with the people from the UK because I wanted them to see it um, with their own eyes, you know, so that was kind of tough for me. Um, but yeah, there were, there were a lot of high points um, for, for New York, definitely. How has singing helped? That comes from Peter in London. And for me, Peter, singing has helped because for me, it's been quite healing. I went back to singing after many years and um, it was good for my soul because I was doing something that I had a passion for, that I loved. And um, it was, so it was really good for me in that way. Um, but it was also good for me because I joined the voice studio in London and um, and I joined this group of really great people, you know, who were all at very different stages of singing. Um, and we would start these courses together and we would all start off pretty timid and scared and not sure what our voices could do. And you would see one another grow over the weeks. So that was an amazing journey to go on with these people. Um, so yeah, that, that's how singing has helped me. What do I place my faith in? And that's come from Anam in New York. I place my faith in me and um, I know it's probably what you weren't expecting, but I've had to, you know, as a young child, there was nobody else to place my faith in. And um, I had to place it in me because if I didn't, then there was, there was nothing, you know. Um, and I, I pushed myself further when I put my faith in me. Um, so that's a good thing for me. And I think what you are probably getting at is, do I f place my faith in anything higher, you know, a higher power? And yes, I do. You know, I was brought up in a Christian family for um, a Christian household for a, a number of years. And although what I was being taught in church often differed from what was going on at home, um, I did get that belief system into me. And, um, you know, that there was something higher, more stronger there. You know, and um, I think what I've done is taken from it what I believe and, um, you know, I believe that love is love and I believe that religion should be about love, not about hate, not about war, not about fighting, not about any of that rubbish. And um, yeah, so I do believe in, in something higher. Um, when did I realise I was gay? Oh, um, that would have been when I was 13. Um, I realised that there was something different. Now, I didn't know what it was. I just knew that there was something something different from the other guys that I was going to school with. And I realised that it was something that I wasn't to be proud of. It was something that I'd been taught was something to be shamed, you know, something shameful. Um, and it was, um, it wasn't a good, it was not a good feeling. It was something that I had to hide and, you know, try and not be because, um, I'd been taught that it was wrong. Next question is, <laughs> did you ever try not being gay? Yes, I tried not being gay from the age of 13 to the age of 21. So I gave it a really good bash, um, but it didn't work because it was me. It's who I am, um, it's, it's what I am, you know, and it's not all of me at all, but it's such an important part of me, you know, and it's a part of me that at the age of 13, 14, 15 was a horrific thing for me. I just thought, I don't want to be this. I'd been taught it was evil, it was wrong, you go to hell, no one will ever love you. And it isn't that way at all. 
you know, I'm so proud to sit here now and say I'm a gay man and I've met some amazing people through that part of my life. I've fallen in love twice in my life. You know, it's been it's been an amazing ride for me. So, um, yeah, I did try not to be gay, but it did not work and it does not. Next page, next question is from Joanne in London and she asks, would I consider doing a shows more often than twice monthly? Yes, of course I would consider it, Joe. Let me know what you want, you know, tell me what do you want, subscribe, get people, you know, to share these videos and definitely if you want more, you can have it. Next question is, do I have tattoos? If so, how many and where? Yes, I do. I have six and they are somewhere on my body. <laughs> are you single or are you seeing anybody? I'm single. So there you go. Putting it out there. Um, do I have a celebrity crush? Of course I have a celebrity crush. It's Jake Gyllenhaal. Who wouldn't love Jake Gyllenhaal? You know, anybody would love Jake Gyllenhaal. So yes. So if you're watching Jake, Hi. Um, last movie that you saw, it was Spotlight and it was amazing. It was one of those movies where you were just like that, what is going on here and how can this be happening? So if you get a chance to see it, please do. Last movie that made me cry was E.T. What were they trying to do to me? That film is just, oh, it tears you apart. But it's so good, so good. So if you haven't seen E.T. for a while, get it. Um, if I had the chance to live anywhere, where would it be? That's a big one because, as a lot of you know, I love, love New York. And I love San Francisco as, as much, you know. They're both amazing, special places to me. Um, but this body needs heat. Um, sun is my best friend so um, yeah so I, in an ideal world this is how it would go I would have a apartment in New York I would have an apartment in San Francisco I would have a beach place you know maybe in Spain or Greece or somewhere local to the UK so I could just pop over for the weekend and I would have um, my place in London so yeah that's the ideal world. The last question is, when will Gracie Hart be making another appearance? Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, Gracie Hart has had more offers of work, more offers from agents, and just more fan mail than anyone has ever had, especially me. So I had to speak to her agent this morning, and this is what I was told. Gracie Hart will make another appearance when she's available. So that's it. I'm afraid you're going to have to wait for Gracie. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming back this week. Remember those things to do. Like, share, comment and subscribe. And yeah, get this video out there to your friends. And um, yeah, remember what I said? 100 subscribers and I was going to sing you a song. Well, I don't know if you don't want to hear me sing, but we're not getting there very fast. So come on, let's get the subscribers in. So thank you. Really look forward to seeing you in two weeks' time. Take care. Look after yourself.